where the Apostle Paul was saying that God is going to come back for a church without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. You know, he's not coming back for a weak church, a sick church, a bound church, a worldly church, a carnal church. And he's bringing revival to get all these old spots and blemishes and wrinkles out of us because we are the bride of Christ. And the bridegroom is coming back for a perfect bride. And that's why he's sending us the outpouring of the Holy Ghost just before he comes back. I know uh, uh, God showed Brother the television years ago that he was going to take all the sicknesses out of the church. That the church, when he comes back, there was not going to be one sickness, right. not one disease, not one uh, physical or mental or any kind of such thing in the body of Christ. Right. And this is what we are contending for, is for that last move of God to get the spots out of us, yes, sir. get the blemishes out of us, yes, Lord. Get the wrinkles out of us. Yes. Amen. Amen. And as I told y'all, when Jesus saved us, you know, he gave us a garment. And that garment that he gave us had spots. No, it didn't. It had blemishes. No, it didn't. It had wrinkles. No. When he saved us, he gave us a, a garment. And that garment was spotless. But since we've been in this world, you know, the more spots somewhere, and the wrinkles, and the blemishes. And that's why he told us, I mean, these things come. He said, you're in the world, but you're not of it. And he wants to, there's, there's a scripture, work out your salvation. You've heard me quote that scripture many times. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Don't allow yourself to be pulled down. Don't lose what grounds you have received spiritually. Don't lose that faith. Don't lose that zeal. That first love. Yes, sir. That fight. That fire. That once burned in us. Don't lose it. Hold what you got. Yeah. Let no man take your crown. You know, uh, Brother uh, Jenkins in one of these churches, they, they, they preach um, once saved, always saved. Y'all ever heard of that? Once saved, always saved. <laughs> well, I'll tell you too, because Mr. Boat didn't. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> That's not true. If that was true, why did Jesus say, endure it to the end? Yes. Huh? That's right. Why did Jesus say fight the good fight of faith? And uh, we've got to keep ourselves from being spotted by all these old doctrines of men out there. Yeah. Blemishes of sicknesses. Blemishes of diseases. And these old spots there's all this old uh, worldliness all these little wrinkles and things. I was telling the people uh, last night or yesterday morning that a um, righteous man, he may fall seven times in a day, but he'll get back up if he's righteous. You know, you, you, you quote that scripture, people think, well, God is there, you fall. I'm kind of like, oh, what you call it? You know, I fell into this. I fell into that temptation. I fell into that sin. I've done this wrong. But that ain't what he's talking about. He's talking about, like Paul, falling through hardships, through trials, through being persecuted for the truth. 
That's what he's talking about. We fall into all of these different things the devil throw at us, but we'll be like Paul. They stoned him, but the disciples got around him and prayed, and he got back up. Right. Did they? Yeah, he did. He's not, he's not talking about falling into alcohol. <laughs> right. Or falling into um, yes, sir. perversion. He's not talking about falling into, even if you did make an uh, abominational sin in your life like that, then you still have the blood to help you to get yourself back out of that. You don't water in the mud if you fall into it. You don't water in it. Do you? He said, I'm right that you don't sin. Yes, but if you do, you have an advocate. Jesus Christ the righteous. Yeah. Turn to him. Come to him. He'll heal. He'll deliver. Yeah. He'll forgive. That's right. But a lot of these things we go through, Brother Larry. He said, my grace is sufficient to help you. And every weakness... In every trial, in every hardship, yes, in every affliction, yeah. my grace is there. I'm not going to uh, just let everything be smooth for you, but my grace is there to help you to overcome it. Yes, sir. Help you to get the victory where you can have a testimony. How that I went through this, but I, the Lord gave me the strength. I went through that. But the Lord brought me out of it. Yeah. And that's what He wants to do. Yes, that's what He wants to do. And I was um, preaching and exalting yesterday morning about some of these things that I'm sure y'all have seen the news. And, and I, I'm just, the news is, I used to sit there and watch the news. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, a, length, a pretty length of time. But man, news is so depressing now. I see why when Sister Beverly was here, she said, Sister Blue, I just can't watch that. Now. All that stuff is too depressing. And my wife said the same. I just can't watch all that. But, you know, you, 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 you sit there and you watch that. You can't just get caught up in the news. Because it will depress you. It won't it? Yes, it will. And you have to learn how to uh, look unto Jesus. Look above all of this. And realize He's there to help us. All of these things was prophesied. This happening right now. I remember years ago, God told us, how many of y'all remember them big tents? Well, I tell you, I miss them tents. I miss the fellowship of the saints. I miss for the children sitting out there with that good tone, singing them songs, ministering to folks, them prayer lines. But you know, God sent him to lay a foundation upon us. Because God saw this day that we're in now. And he saw that the only ones that was going to make it during this time was those that stayed in prayer. Y'all remember that? He said, I see a time coming. He said, the only ones going to make it are those that have a prayer line. And keep a prayer line. And a day go by that I haven't got on my knees or, or, or got somewhere and prayed. Before I go to bed that night, I pray. I ask the Lord to disturb my rest. Wake me up 3 o'clock in the morning to pray. And that's the only thing that's been keeping me. That's the only thing that's been keeping you. And you being on the right foundation makes a difference. They have these big mega churches they were everywhere. It was close to 500 of them in the nineties, spread it out everywhere. Man, after that COVID hit in 2019 in December, um, a lot of these churches shut down. Many of them. Police even drove by here to see if we was having church. Y'all remember? 
I didn't shut down the church in Jumping and the Osha. We just threw the COVID and everything. Now there's another COVID out there. That may have been the COVID that got a hold to uh, Biden. The KP 3.1.1. They did run out of names. But remember I was telling you that COVID, that thing that broke out. Over a thousand people was dying a day right up there in New York. That's right. And uh, like I said, shut down churches everywhere. You remember I told you what Beelzebub had it in Matthew chapter 12 that uh, when Jesus cast out a demon that was blind, dead, and dumb, when he cast them out, the uh, people the Pharisees, Sadducees, were saying, well, he cast out devils by the prince of devils. In other words, Beelzebub. He's one of those demons. When the gates of hell open, he come out of there, and he's behind all the sicknesses. Beelzebub. He's behind all the diseases. See, different, all kinds. See, people think it's just Lucifer that was kicked out of heaven. There were seven of those big evil things kicked out of heaven. And I was setting up yesterday morning, four of them, when they were kicked out, they were cast into the river Euphrates. That's over there in the Middle East. That's right. Where God said that blood is going to run up to the horse's bridle. Where God said the wall of all wars is going to break up. See these four evil demons that was fallen angels that was cast out of heaven now that river Euphrates that um, what have been held bondage that now are being released that's why we're having you know, war just like um, these tornadoes, God said, I'll send a whirlwind upon what? The head of the wicked. The head of the wicked. And these whirlwinds, these tornadoes, it's part of God's judgment. God uses nature to demonstrate his judgment. That's right. To manifest it. He uses tornadoes. He uses floods. Yeah. He uses droughts. Right. He uses earthquakes. He uses these things to, to, to um, carry out his will, to carry out his judgments. Sure. And he uses the sword, the sword which is war. The war that's breaking out could escalate, and it looked like it is escalate. We could go into World War III before the day is out. These four fallen angels, there were seven of them, Lucifer was one of them, but he wasn't the only one. Beelzebub was another. And look what he's done, brought all these diseases, all these viruses and things. Yes, sir. And uh, these four is fixing to be released. And I mean, they've been down there locked up over there in the uh, river Euphrates. And, you, and, and the river Euphrates, you have um, four nations that connect with the river. One of them is Turkey. The other one is Iraq. Another one is Iran. Another one is Syria. And that's where we have all kinds of a war breaking out. See, God said, be watchful of all of these events. Look at the war that broke out. Man, Trump didn't even want to get out of office good. Of course, he was robbed of his election back in 2020. But he couldn't hardly get out of office until Biden. Man, people falling off of airplanes trying to get out of Afghanistan. That's right. Didn't he? Yes, he was. And that... And, uh, what are these 
other two places where war is breaking out besides the Middle East? Huh? Ukraine. Ukraine and what's the other one? Russia and Ukraine and it's another place. Taiwan, is, huh? Taiwan and China. Oh, have mercy. You see how the war pots are bombing. Y'all remember back in the main as God told us. We tents up on Lewis. God told us the war pots are bombing. They were under. And I heard the man of God say, Lord, I don't want to be here. I want you to take me and my wife out of here. Yeah, he weeped and cried like Jeremiah, we've been prophet. Because of what he saw coming. Now that which has been spoken by the prophets has come upon us. Yes, it has. Has come upon our generation. And things could escalate. And that's what's happening. And there's a giant sword that's been cast to this earth. Um, and and it, and and and, and uh, these nuclear bombs. I don't mean to talk back. Right. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me get off of this stuff. It's all right. Let me get off of this stuff. It's all right. But times are very serious right now. Stay on. And we're going to have to. This is the time that Paul was speaking about. When he says, an evil day, Brother Hunter, when he said, put on the whole armor of God. This is a time that he was talking about. Yes, sir. And I look preaching, just doing the best we can, but boy, I tell you, we need a Elijah kind of word. We need a Moses kind of word. Yes, a Jeremiah kind of word. Yes, sir. Brother Charles said, he said, y'all think y'all will need me. He said, but when I'm going, you're going to find out this word has been holding back a lot of things. And when he got off the scene in 2019, here come Corona. He got off the scene in 2019, 2020, the borders opened up. Yes, sir. People come from, from 200 different countries. Got close to 20 million people in this country. That's right. And I don't need to say all these things that look at how they oh Jesus. You tell me we don't need to put on the whole arm of God now? Now I see what he mean when he said um only the praying people are going to survive. I see what Jesus meant when he told us in Luke chapter 18. He told us men ought to always pray. Yes, and I think Faint means to give up. Give this courage. Throw your hands up. Quit. Man ought to always pray and not faint. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Stay with the word, saints. God said you're going to know them by the gifts and by the great miracles and all of that, didn't he? Yes, sir. Huh? No, sir. Didn't he? No, sir. How did he say you're going to know them? By the, fruit. By the life that they live. Huh? People can go around here so they can, they can move mountains. But if they're not bringing forth the fruit, the holiness, the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, many is going to come in my name. He said, have I not cast out devils? Have I not done this? Have I not? He going to say, depart from me. You workers of iniquity. So we're going to be known by the life, by the fruit, by the nature of Jesus Christ. Because there are going to be false anointings with lying signs. So you can't go by, you can't be chasing after signs. You can't be chasing after somebody because they say, look how God used me. Used me. You have to go by the word. That's right. Don't deviate from the word. That's right. You know them by the life of holiness, the life of purity, the life and the nature of Christ that's flowing out of them. Yes, sir. A good tree can't bring forth evil fruit. That's right. An evil tree can't bring forth good fruit. That's right. Sweet and bitter 
can't come out of the same fountain. Can it? That's right. No, it can't. Stay with the Bible. Stay with the Word. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And I told y'all, don't have your eyes on me, but keep your eyes on the Word that I'm preaching. On the life that I demonstrate before you. Yes, sir. You don't see me go around here chasing somebody's shirt tail. That's right. And all this other stuff. Not because I'm better than somebody, because I stay on my knees and I pray. Yes, sir. Because I'm flesh. Yes, sir. As long as we down here on the earth, we're flesh. Yes, sir. We're going to be uh, tempted. The devil is going to do everything he can to break us, yes, to wear us down, yes, to cause us to give in, to give up. That's right. But he said, you pray and you won't enter into these temptations. All right. Pray you won't enter into these things. Yes, sir. Stay in prayer. Stay full of the word. Yes. Stay full of the spirit. Yeah. Don't go to bed, as I've told you, with grudges, with resentment, with attitude. Don't go throughout the day with these things. And always judge yourselves. God said if you judge yourself. You're not going to be judged. You're keeping him with water. He'll give him some more. Drink a little bit more for me, little buddy. Judge yourselves. Yes, sir. He said, if you judge yourself, you won't be judged when I begin to pour out my wrath. God finna judge the nations. He finna judge the whole world. But if we judge ourselves, we won't be judged with the wicked. You know, we examine that. Let a man examine himself, didn't he? See if he be in the faith or see if he be a reprobate. Judge yourself. By the word, judge yourself. Not by somebody else's life, but judge yourself by what's written in that Bible. Huh? And he told us, judge you not. Don't go around judging one another. Lest you be judged with the same judgment that you put on somebody else. Don't judge people. Pray for them. That's right. That's right. Amen. Pray for them. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. And God will have mercy. If we have mercy. Yes, sir. Never hold a grudge. Never hold an attitude. Never hold a spirit of resentment against anybody. Huh? And he said, if you have a weakness or sin or something in your life, you, you um, um, pray. A lot, of th a lot of times things come on us because of a, you know, we ain't pray through we have things that we hold in our spirit, in our heart. And these things, you know, the devil is looking for, he's looking for, what they call that? Opportunity. Opportunity. Bible <laughs> to get no place to the devil. Resist him. Huh? Looking for what? Heart spot. Hey, I can't pick up nothing. I got to get out of here while I can pick up something. That's right. See, the devil, he'll, he'll, he'll put something away. Well, you can, well, you can pick it up. He'll give you a hot spot. He'll give you, he'll put something in your, oh yeah, I see sin in this person. Oh yeah, I see what this person has been, you know, talking about folks. I see what this person has been listening to talk. I see what this person ain't been praying. A hot spot, and it draws these demons like, like a dead like a dead uh, rabbit, or like something that been ran over, and it draws them on buzzards. That's right. I smell death. I smell sin here. <laughs> I smell people ain't prayed through here. I smell lies. I smell deception. I smell something ain't right here, and it draws these seducing spirits, yeah. these religious spirits, these lying spirits, yes, sir. these unclean spirits. That's right. Come on. Sit down and watch something. You got them in watching on television. They draw them demons. They say, oh yeah. I say, they're interested in watching this nakedness. They're interested in listening to this cussing. They're interested in uh, things that, oh yeah. 
and you create a hot spot and them demons are drawn into your living room. Drawn into your mind. That's right. Come on. Drawn into your heart. That's right. And they don't come by themselves. They bring diseases with them. Yeah. They bring infirmities with them. Because you have given them the license to come in with these things when you get space. That's right. Come on, brother. Well, this Bible said preach sound doctor. Yes, sir. That's all I'm doing, is just giving you sound. Yes, sir. I'm trying to get to help. I'm trying to get you to help with me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what he said. Cry loud. Spare not. That's right. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Y'all saw what happened over there in uh, at the Olympics. How these people come on that bus, on that boat, coming in, and then getting up there. This woman, this heavyset woman. You know the, the uh, last, what what you call it, the pet, the uh, last supper, the last supper, and how all these uh, drag queens, so. you know how Jesus had disciples all around him, well this woman had all these drag queens, I mean all these evil ones, and that was nothing but blasphemy, blasphemy. That's right. Yes, it was. In that um, Olympics, 200 nations was represented there. And the ones that, you know, got up under that umbrella and then embraced that, they are under that curse. That, that, that part of curse upon everybody, people that don't stand for the truth. This is the time you can't just be neutral. You got to take your stand. Yes, sir. Don't we? Bible said, girl up. The loins of your mind. Don't let your mind be corrupted. Don't let your mind be polluted. Let your mind stay sober, stay pure, yeah. stay holy, stay clean. Yes, he said, pull down strongholds, cast down imagination. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Keep a good, keep your mind saved. Yes. Keep your spots out when God, He renewed you. And one of the things when God saved you and, and, and you become a new creature, one of the first things He said, present your body now a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's right. Get rid of that mind that you had when you was in the world. And that mind has to be renewed. God renews our spirit, but we have to renew our mind. With the word and with prayer. Yes. That's right. God cleanses up our flesh, but we have to keep it unspotted. We have to keep our flesh from being defiled. Yes, sir. Don't we? Come on. Keep what you get from God. God give you anointing. That anointing came through prayer. Don't let the devil take your prayer out. If you do, you'll be like Samson. You shake yourself, won't be nothing there to stop the devil. God give us a, He give us a, 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 a strength. He give us power over the devil. But if the devil see a hot spot, That's right. huh? That's right. He seen a hot spot in David. David was supposed to be out there fighting with his man, but he was at home. Uh, I don't mind is a devil's workshop on top of the roof. And he looked and he saw a naked woman taking a bath when his top generals, wives, while the general was out there fighting, his wife was taking a bath on the rooftop. And David just happened to see it. And when David saw it, you know what he done? Huh? What? Huh? He looked the second time. <laughs> That's right. Didn't he? Yeah, he did. And he um and that second look, that first look, you know, was accident. <laughs> but when you get that second and third and fourth look, then you have open up yourself 
So the spirit of lust to the spirit of uncleanness. That's why you have to guard yourself against these traps, these things that are out there. Yes, sir. Long as you're down here on this earth, you're human, you're in a physical body, and you're going to be um, tempted by the devil. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, proud of life. Right. Keep yourself. Keep yourself through prayer. Through putting on the whole armor, having your lungs girded about with truth. You know, when you talking about your lungs girded about with truth, over there in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, yeah. I believe in verse 11, sure. he speaks about how the death angel was coming through. Well, the death angel is fixing to come through the land. Because of this abomination over there, not only over there at the Olympics in France, but in every nation. That's right. Psalms, 10, Psalms, 9, 10, Psalms 9 and 17, I believe, it says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that what? Forget God. Forget God. Shall be turned into hell. And that death angel. That Ezekiel chapter 9 speaks about. Yes. He speaks about put a mark upon every man that cry and sign. And I'm gonna keep them. Yeah. I'm gonna put a mark upon them that's praying, that's striving, trying to live right, and I'm gonna keep them. But upon every man and woman, boy and girl, he said that when I don't see no crying in the house, no praying, no seeking God, he said, I'm gonna send my angel with destroying weapons and he said kill them. I don't care if they're old, if they're young, if they're male, if they're female, if they're babies. He said have no mercy, have no pity. That's right. Yeah, he did. Well this is tough. Yeah. This is tough. Yes it is. God got angels that's, that's not going to show mercy. Not going to show mercy. Jesus. That's why we need to get in, get in grace, get in protection, get in the blood, yeah. walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, abide in the Word, yeah. let the Word abide in us, yes. put on the whole arm of God, yes, sir. have your lungs girded about with truth. That's what he says in Exodus 12 and verse 11, he was just thinking to read it. Yes, sir. He said, Moses, God, let us read that scripture, Exodus chapter 12. And verse 11. Let's read that scripture right quickly. And thus shall we eat. Thus shall we eat. With your loins girded. He said eat. In other words, Moses said, death angel is coming through Egypt. The death angel it, it is not just coming through Egypt, but through the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were sent. Sure. Death angel passed through. Did, is that right? That's right. Okay, open the microphone. Go ahead. Find the scripture. You got it? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And thus shall you eat it. Exodus um, 12. 12 and verse 11. And thus shall you eat it. Thus shall you eat. When your Lord is girded. With your, no, have, your, have yourself dressed. Have yourself clothed. Have yourself ready for what's fixed to come. Don't let it catch you undressed. Don't let it catch you with your armor on. Don't let it catch you in a counter state of mind. Don't let it catch you when you're not praying. Yes. Don't let it catch you when you're caught up in foolishness. But have yourself, have your lungs girded. Have yourself ready. Yes. Stay in a readiness. Yes, sir. And that's what prayer does. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Your shoes on your feet. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. And your staff in your hand. Be girded. Be girded. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. Let's read what that says. Hold what you got there. But first Peter 1 and verse 13. You got that? Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. In other words, keep your mind. Keep your staff sober. I mean, God don't mind us landing, having some fun, but He don't want us to get caught up in all this folly and all this carnality, foolishness. 
It's a serious time. It's a sober time. And you don't want us, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get up in this poor bed and just cut up with you and tell all kind of jokes just to get you laughing and, and get in all this old uh, flesh. That's right. Huh? That's right. Keep, keep a soberness. Don't go out there and get drunk of all this old foolishness. That's right. And all these old curls of lying. Keep an alertness, soberness. Stay in an alertness of mind. I got a, I had three dogs, one of them that he got to him, I guess, I don't know. But one of them died, his name was Bones, and I have one named Heidi and Pepper. Their own was uh, 